All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Slavik Majeski. I'm Ali Osman. Yassin. I'm Lord Shaw. Today, we're going to be talking to y'all about the five most important aspects of credit scores. I know what y'all are thinking. <sighs> credit scores, man, I'm going to tune out right now. Believe me, this is such an important key for everybody's success in here. Let me ask y'all something before we get even started. We're here at this university to build our success, to build our futures, to better ourselves, our careers, our families, whatever the case might be. But what is the one thing you've always wanted to treat yourself to? For me, I want an Audi A8. What about y'all? What do y'all want? Me too. Say, I want an Audi. <laughs> and these aspirations are totally, totally reachable. But we have to understand that a credit score allows you to pay minimal for that asset or that thing that you want. You don't want to overpay. Nobody likes to find out that you're paying $900 for this car and somebody else is paying $650. It sucks. It's a bad feeling. And what we're going to do today is unleash those keys for y'all so you don't have that feeling. So. We want to keep a couple of things in mind before we start our presentation. 100% um, of the class during our survey realized that credit scores are very important. Credit scores are very influential and they're going to dictate an aspect of our lives. With that being said, 89% uh, of people know they can obtain a free credit score, which is great. We all have exposure to this fact. But 56% of us don't know our credit score. And that to us is very shocking. Uh, in today's world, I feel like everybody should know their credit score. We should have that knowledge and know how to apply it. Um, one last thing to consider is that 64% of us are, within the next six months, are have the intention to apply for a loan, an installment loan, whether it be a car, mortgage, or a credit card. So let's dive right into it. FICO score. How many people have heard the term FICO before? Almost all of us. FICO is the most used credit score system by lenders and financial institutions. 90% of them use this system. It's been around for 25 years. It was started by the Fair Isaac and uh, New Incorporation, and it only deals with financial information. This is good because it, it limits only to the financial aspects, which logically that's the way it should be. You know, if you're going to apply for credit, which is something that has to do with finance, only your financial factors should influence that. Now, when we dive deeper into what a FICO score actually is, we have five components that make up a FICO score. 35% is uh, 35% is our payment history. Our payment history meaning, have you made late payments? Are you on time with your payments? How have you controlled these payments in your past? 30% is gonna be the amount of our debt to value ratio. How much money do we have on those credit cards? How much are those student loans? The next percentage that we have is 15% for the length of the actual history itself. How long have you been a credit borrower and user? How long have you actively been actually using these tools? And then 10% is split evenly, or I'm sorry, 20% is split evenly into 10% between new credit and types of credit. This is important because you don't want to just have credit cards. Most of us have student loans, which is great. It's an installment loan. We also want to have credit cards. We want to have perhaps a car loan, an investment, different type of uh, financial resources. I'm going to pass it over to you, see, and he's going to explain more of the importance of credit scores itself, reports, and how to. All right, thank you. So, really quick, um, the next slide. Who is involved? That's our main question right now. The fact that he already mentioned what FICO score is and everything, that's great, but who <laughs> actually, what the process of it all, right? And it all comes down to you, you and I. That's where it starts off, not even in the credit cycle. The first person is you, you're paying the lender. As soon as you make an account, right, as soon as you open up that credit line, you're gonna have to either make a payment and you make it or you miss it, right? One or the other happens. And as soon as you either make it or miss it, it's gonna be reported and it's gonna be counted down in your history, right? So then the lender will take that history and they're gonna update their record once a month, guys, not every week or anything like that, and they all differ uh, on their date, but they will do it once a month, they're gonna update the record, and they're gonna send it to the credit reporting company. As soon as the credit reporting companies have it, the credit bureau that you guys know, they're going to send it to new lenders who will then you know, assess the situation and be like, oh, this person is credit worthy or not credit worthy, right? That's the fourth one. And uh, as you guys know, the, the, four, the three credit bureaus are themselves Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Now, when we took a survey of the class, right, every single person, once again, as Bobby said, knows what a credit score is, right? But 50% don't have, like, don't know their credit score or never checked one, which I think is very critical because you should all know yours by now, you're a college student. And I thought 50% was a high number, right? And what's even more strange was 20% of that 50%, basically 20% of, sorry, the whole class all knows, how to use, knows how to find their credit through a free system. One of the free systems I'm going to talk about really quick is Credit Karma. Um, 
it's a very popular, wide known, but for some reason it was only like 20% of our class who knows how to use Credit Karma or, or knows what it is actually. So I thought it would be very important to talk about. I'm not trying to market this company or anything, I don't work for them, okay? But I think it's a very, very popular and very great tool to use. Uh, Credit Karma, as soon as you open it up, the first thing you'll see is your credit score, right? It'll look like that on the bottom left corner. And they actually pull it through two credit bureaus, TransUnion and Equifax. As you can see, both numbers are kind of different because as I said, lenders typically tend to do once a month, but it varies, right? So the discrepancies make up the different numbers, but it's a range. It gives you a good range of where you're kind of at. And it shows you uh, on the scale, you know, you're either excellent, good, very good, poor, very poor, right? It'll tell you. As you can see on the bottom, it says next update in seven days. So Credit, Car credit Karma, they actually update the credit score every seven days. Uh, just to give you an overview, an update, you know, on where you're at, what you're looking at. So if you're trying to apply for something, credit card, um, <coughs> car loan, or mortgage, then you kind of know where you're at before you go into that process. One of the things uh, we want to talk about, well, actually three things that we want to relate to you guys that we think are very important because you might fall into it, a uh, keyword, you might use your credit for that. Um, credit card, auto loans, or mortgages. And we're going to talk about all those three things. But the first thing I'll talk about, which is Credit Karma. And Credit Karma is great for that, because Credit Karma will show you recommendations as well, not only uh, for what you have right now, but also in the future. So if you pull up your credit credit score and everything, you can find out that they have six factors that they look at. I know this is kind of scary and all, but <laughs> six factors is what they're looking at when they calculate your credit score. Right? The first one is credit card utilization. What does that mean? If a lender gives you $30,000, they don't want you to use $30,000. They want you to use a certain amount and be balanced with it. They want you to pay it back, right? So you want to make sure you're under at least 30%. That's a good way to look at it. This person, for example, is in the 5%. They use 5% of their total credit. That's really good. As you can see, it says excellent. Payment history, what does that mean? It means if they give you money, they're letting you borrow money, they want you to pay it back. Money money is important, guys. Money is important. So you want to pay it back. And if you make, if you make your payments 100% on time, you're excellent. You're great. Good job. Now, sometimes you'll fall into other categories where you're bankrupt, uh, foreclosures, and stuff like that. It'll, uh, tax collections, right? Sorry, uh, debt collections, they'll come and get you. Derogatory marks are a big thing, okay? Uh, they have a big impact on your credit score, and lenders will typically look at this. For example, this person has zero, so they're excellent, right? As you keep going down, age of credit history, what does that mean? If you have been using your credit for a long period of time, what does it tell the lender? It tells them, that you're kind of reliable, right? That you've been using it for a long time and you're good with it. So it tells them uh, how long you've been using it, so it's, uh, it kind of gives you, it gives them a sense of uh, confidence that they can give you more money. Uh, total accounts, that's very important too because it shows them that when they're giving you money, that they know that you know they're sensible, that other people are also giving you money, not just them, right? So if you have a lot of accounts, that means a lot of people trust you. Last but not least, credit inquiries. Uh, this kind of shows whether you're desperate or not and trying to get other credit, or you, you just can't get credit because you have bad credit. So lenders can be like, oh, this guy has been you know, trying to get credit like six, seven times in this month. That's not good. He's not getting it. Right? So that's very important. Uh, and now I'm going to give it off to Ali. We'll talk about follow All right. So now that y'all know how to check your credit score, I'm going to tell y'all how it affects uh, getting a car loan. So as you can see, uh, if you have a score of 500 to 589, if you pay over five years, 8,500 in interest for your car, versus if you have a score of 720 to 850, you only pay 1,700 over five years in interest. So pretty sure none of y'all want to pay an extra 6,700 for a car that only depreciates in value. And now I'm going to pass it off to Moez to talk about mortgages. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about mortgages. How many of you guys have ever applied or have a mortgage within the past five years? I have. Okay, so that's a good thing. You have never applied. So we can get you ready to apply for a mortgage. I have applied for two mortgages in the past in the past five years. The first time, I was not prepared. I was not ready. I didn't know what to do, what to expect. So the second time, I was absolutely ready. I got the best rate. I got my credit score up, and it was wonderful. So let's talk about understanding today's mortgage market. So pre-2008, uh, you all, all you need, all you needed to apply for a mortgage was a pulse. You <laughs> pulse, you approve. Now, after post-2008 and all the crisis that we had because of because of the pulse, because of people, uh, lenders just approving you because you have a pulse, we are in a situation where 
the lenders will look at every single thing. We'll look at all the, all the categories they, they talked about. And then, so basically, to, after post uh, they can look at all these factors, so we'll get you ready. So now, let's see about getting you approved. So the, the important things are, let's look at your income and your monthly debts. So your monthly debt payments are basically your auto loan, your student loan, your credit card payments. So once you have factored out, once you've figured out what your income is and your, your debt payments, let's look at how much cash you can put down. So ultimately, your goal should be, when you buy a house, to put 20% down. When you put 20% down, you avoid PMI. PMI is private mortgage insurance. Uh, it's not insurance for you, it's the insurance for the lender. So if you default, they still kind of recoup their money. Uh, let's look at how much house you can afford. Income, monthly debt payments, and how much you can put down will, will determine actually how much, how much you can uh, afford. So let's say an example. You and your spouse make about $100,000 a year. Debt to income ratio should be no more than 35%. What that means is $100,000, 35% debt to income ratio, $35,000 over, over, over the whole year for your debt payments. So that means your debt payment can be about roughly about $3,000 a month. Now in, the, in our example, let's say you and your wife have two loans, you have a car loan, you have a credit card debt of about $1,000 a month. So that leaves you off with your mortgage payment for only about $2,000. Now, with a, great, with, with a great credit score, you can buy more. Because when you buy, when you can buy more, you can, when you, when you default, when you have a better credit score, you, can, you get a, a lower interest rate, which will allow you to purchase more. So, let's see, I'm gonna pass it on to Albert. So now that y'all know how your credit score affects your credit cards, car loans, or mortgages, I'm gonna talk about what other facts, uh, what other areas that it affects. So, it you know that it determines whether you're approved or denied for credit. Uh, it shapes your interest rate. So, as you saw in the car scenario, you're gonna pay more if you have a lower credit score. And it affects other factors like uh, if you're trying to get an apartment, you're going to pay, pay a higher deposit if you're trying to get a cell phone. Uh, sometimes even employers look at your credit score to see if you're a good candidate for this job. And so lenders uh, give you a higher interest rate whenever uh, they give you a higher interest rate whenever, uh, whenever you have a lower credit score because they want to recoup as much as they can back in the beginning in case you default on your loan later on. So now I'm going to pass it back to Moritz. Yeah, he's going to talk about, okay, let's talk about how to repair. Now let's see, you pull up your credit report, a good, a good practice would be to pull up your credit report once a month at least and look for errors. Once you've found, once you've identified the error, you should, the first thing should be, you should see what credit uh, bureau has, has that error on there. You should contact them at first. Do not contact the, 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 credit, the creditor. Contact the, the lender first, right? Wait for up to 30 days. They have 30 days to, to get the error fixed. If they do not, contact the creditor with, with all the documentation that you've uh, contacted the, the bureau. And usually it takes about 30 to 90 days to get the error fixed. Once you have the error fixed, your credit score will go back up and you're ready to apply for any type of loan, mortgage, credit card, student loan, whatever you will get the best rate. So for our conclusion, let's pass it on back to Tom. All right, so I know we just threw a lot of information at y'all. We realized that credit scores can be something that's tricky. But essentially, I wanted to kind of compare this to you from real world scenarios to kind of conclude this up. I mean, I know any of y'all can grab information, retain it, and, and acknowledge it. We're all college students, we're all very smart. but we gotta be able to relate in personal life. I mean, a credit score is like your first impression. When you see that person, you're like, man, they are, man, that's the person I wanna be with, you know? You worry, you're like, how do I wanna come across? What do I say? Do I approach them this way? That's what a credit score is for a bank or for a lender. Or perhaps, you know, you wanna market yourself to a certain way because you're trying to build a business. This is what a credit score can use for, uh, for you. It's so important. And again, with the statistic that 56% of us don't really realize how important this credit score is or haven't been exposed to it yet, we wanna make sure that everybody has a credit score. I know all of you today are gonna go home, rush, log online, 
find out what your credit score is, but it's how you can apply it. It's how you can actually use the credit score, because it doesn't do you any good to know it. How do you use it? How do you fix it? And you'll never be faced with this situation ever again in your life. So I understand you're looking to get financed to buy a car today. Yes, we like to start a family and we're just looking for a vehicle more reliable, you know? Fantastic, you came to the right place. Let me get you started with some paperwork. By the way, I should mention, uh, we have bad credit. You say you have bad credit? Well, yeah, sort of. Basically. You say you have bad credit? Well, don't get it, buddy! The people are you! None of us want to be here, you know, this is scary, you know, this is uncomfortable, I mean, some people, the lack of confidence that some people might have regarding a credit score because they know it's bad is huge, just like another group said before, 85% of bad ideas aren't really uh, explained or you know, people don't make those comments because they're afraid of what others are going to judge them off. And th we feel like the credit score system applies the same. Some people might be nervous because they do have that bad score. They've made a late payment. They forgot to pay off those Prada shoes on the credit card that they wanted so bad. But it's okay. There's ways to fix it. We went over the five most important things for you in the what, the when, the how, the why. And ultimately, these are tools for you. This is your toolbox to build your house and build your life. So with that, we want to thank you for your time and want to answer any questions today.